Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to do a little overview of this SAPOS PCB board. Now, I am not a specialist in the PCB design. I am not specialist in the circuitry, circuitry on this board. I'm not specialist in all of these different integrated circuits that are on it. But what I'm good at is spotting of really good soldering jobs. And out of all of these boards, all of these Chinese boards that I have ordered so far, this is one of the cleanest one I have ever seen when it comes to soldering job. I don't think I have seen anything else like this. Let's look at some other pictures. Here's the other side of this board. You can see down where these uh, connectors are soldered, they all look good, they all look clean. Same on the front side. Solder is everywhere. They have these, uh, uh, they have this captive glue for the uh, capacitors. This is full of some glue to make it where it's not going to vibrate and make a, make a noise. Everything looks like it's professionally done. How long is this going to last? I really don't know. But this is what I really like about this board. You have big old heat sink over here. I can only imagine that that the quality of the of the job underneath the sink is as equally as good as all of these soldering points on this board. Let's talk about a couple of things that I really don't like. I don't like the size screw size over here. I might have to do something of my own to make this more a little bit more stronger. I think there's some kind of a bus bar that goes over here, but however there might be for one of those battery packs that they sell or whatnot. But if I want to bet there's a bus bar coming over here. So here I'm going to put bus bar of my own and then right here in the middle I will make a points of attachment for a positive side of the battery. Okay? And the reason why this is done this way is to spread current around. You should not be bringing just one cable over here in the middle and then shoving all the current across this connection and then expect it to to spread this way and to spread this way. They have it this way so current spread can occur right at the point of connection where the cable or a bus bar comes in. Now other thing that I don't like is this shunt right here okay the shunt is on the of course battery negative side and I don't like the method of attachment over here I don't know how would I'm how am I going over, over to overcome this I don't know what I have to do here but I would hate to have one odd or some of you like four odd or two odd cable hanging off of this it will put enormous amount of st strain onto these connections over here. Maybe it is designed that way, but I will try to accomplish something else. Now, another thing what I like about this board is all of these major components over here have been protected with what I thought at the beginning is like a something like a like nail polish. However, when you touch this substance that is on top of these integrated circuits over here, it feels almost soft like a silicone type compound that they put on there. Okay? And you can see where they, they've done, I guess, all of the points on the board that they have needed to do. Hopefully, my board is the latest and the greatest where I will not have to go and replace one of these capacitors, not capacitor, one of the resistors or the diode on the board, just like a Ray Build Stuff did on his. I noticed that. Um, and that uh, I have probably the latest firmware for this board. Okay, Shunt is, I think it says 300 amps at 75 millivolts. We will check how accurate this shunt it is once I have this going. Now, 
I have already spoken about these connections on the board right here. Um, why is this important? The reason why it's important is this right here. I don't like this. I don't know how many of you like this too. I don't like cables of unknown gauge connected over here claiming that it can do three, five hundred amps, thousand amps. This obviously cannot be done. I really don't like this method of attachment where they can't even kind of, uh, uh, they can't even make a good proper soldering connections when you shove a cable in there. Okay, This is something that I don't like. I'm sure it works just fine, but extra connections just to make one bigger connection for a negative side, I just don't like it. This is what I see and this is what I like on CEPLOS is that you do not have the cables already shoved in there and you just you are uh, left on the mercy of whatever kind of cable they put on there. That is what I like. So negative shunt connection over here we're gonna have to add the bus bar for, for better rigidity of this board. The method of a connection I think will have to be standoffs. Um, I don't know is there any connection between these holes or and any of these components over here. If it's not, I will use a metal standoffs. If there is, then I will use a plastic standoffs just like I use on these power walls that I have over here outside. How am I going to attach this to the power wall? I do not know. I think on the end I'll probably have to remove the fan and come up with some kind of a solution up on top. But that is yet to be seen. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So the next thing, let's look at the other components over here. Um, we have already seen this side of the board. It has RS485B, RS485, and CAN bus connections. This is this is as it's been discussed on the DIY uh, solar forum has been discussed to death. This is to, to stack them together and then a one to go on a computer and then you have a dip switches over here to address them. So software will know who is it talking to at this moment. So and then of course what I like also is that it comes with the pre-charge capacitor so we don't have to kill ourselves. In this case, that's it. And it has a, this says it's a recess switch, but however, according to the manual that you do not get included in the purchase of this device, is that this is an on-off switch, I guess also a reset switch if you hold it long enough. However, on the other side, they said this is a switch too. Okay, I don't know what it is, but we shall definitely try to find out. Here's the other look at the components and at the solder jobs that they did right here. It looks really good in my opinion. Some of you might, might disagree. Minor disagreement that I have will be over here is a, is a misspelling. Apparently I have model at 48200 instead of model 48200. Those are little nitpicks things, but hey will all shall survive. Uh, again, a close-up of soldering jobs on these connections. I like them. I don't know is everybody's experience just the same as mine, but that's what it is. And this moment, we'll see how it works. As long as it works good, I'll be happy. But, but man, once you zoom in into these connections right here and you see these solder jobs, they really look professional, guys. Nothing which you will find on the other ones. Alright, so let's move on. Okay. Here is the back side of LCD screen. Again, once you zoom in, you can see really good soldering, real good soldering job. This is a connector over here for the screen up front. Here's a different with a different lightning, so maybe you will see things a little bit better. Here is the front side, and of course you have various buttons over here. I don't know what they do at this point. 
but I'm pretty sure I'll find out once I connect it. Is there anything else to say about this? Uh, well, this was just an overview of a PCB components, and here are here's the wiring harness. There's two of them. One is black one. One is white one. That go to corresponding connections on the board, on the PCB board. I like they're already pre-filled to protect from corrosion. I want to assume or intrusion. It really feels professional. You have two wire connectors and on each of those two wire connectors you get two temperature probes. I like it. It has a four temperature probes instead of just one or two for a 48 volt battery pack. I like that. I think I can work with it. Now the only problem I think I will have is that uh, wires are going to be short. I might have to wire them in into what I already have on my power wall. We'll see how that goes, but it's, it is unknown at this point as to how am I going to attach this. So once I come to that bridge, I guess I'll cross it and I'll share my findings with you guys. But so far, everything that I have seen looks really good. Here it is one more time. And this is what I was talking about. This connection right here, it, 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 it's just, it's driving me nuts. I hope this works good and it can stay on there for a long time. But it's just, mm. I wish this was done with at least with the M6 connections instead of this 5 or 4 millimeter uh, bolts and screws that they have over here. But we'll see. Maybe it's perfectly fine. Maybe I'm just tripping for no reason. Here's one more. And this is that goo that they put on there. It's kind of like a silicone. It doesn't feel solid. You can actually kind of dig your, dig your fingernails in there. It doesn't slip off. It feels, it feels like rubber. Okay? And the board, again, as I said, looks really, really nice. Here's the balance resistors. And the funny thing is, I'm going to keep my JKBMS balancers connected on there. They can do, they can do amp and two amps respectively in balancing. This is just to bleed them off. So I'm going to keep that on there. But this will be a big one. And I hope they come up with the firmware soon where they can talk to where they can talk to uh, uh, MPP uh, inverters, MPP 6548 inverters. Believe it or not, it does have a battery for keep alive memory. That is really cool too. Fully professional product in my opinion. Let's just hope it works really good. I might even go and uh, take this heatsink off, um, off of one of these and take a peek underneath. But if I have to guess, it's probably really good. But we'll see. Alright guys, I'll talk to you soon.